Hi there, my name's Nick. I'm from the Tambourine Rainforest Skywalk. Uh, welcome today. We're on our property here on North Tambourine, up in the hinterland of the Gold Coast. And today we're looking at the Richmond Birdwing Butterfly. That's a, a very special part of our property here. Uh, we've had this property uh, for the, basically for the last uh, 30 years and uh, we decided that we wanted to do something on this section of the property and my parents had been on a, uh, one of the skywalks in Tasmania and really loved the whole concept of um, a walkway through the rainforest. So over the last 10 years we've um, put together one here. Um, but the bird wing is a really special part of this property. So the Richmond Birdwing Butterfly, very, very special. It's actually Australia's second largest butterfly and very, very pretty to see. The males have a very iridescent green on the top of their wing. Um, balanced off with the black, they're really stunning. When you see them with the light on their back, the, the brilliance of them is, is breathtaking. They have uh, some very cool features. They, their glide is one thing that I really love. They always get, they flap up to a height and then they stop flying all together and they just glide down and it's, it's almost mesmerizing. I love just sitting there watching the, their flight patterns alone. Uh, the, the female, for example, she's forever working. She'll be going through the vines, landing on. They actually have uh, tasters in their feet. So they actually taste through their feet. So she has to land on every plant until she lands on the correct vine that will give them then her the correct signal or the chemical cue to say that that is Parastolochia prevenosa the, the plant that they need to lay on that she'll then reach underneath lay a couple of eggs and fly off and con continue to do that when you see them out they just are forever working but female just such a beautiful uh, beautiful butterfly as well so one of the biggest problems is that the bird wing is vulnerable and some of the reasons behind that are obviously A is loss of habitat so the vine that they need to, you know, these eggs to be laid on so that the caterpillar can eat this vine um, is being destroyed and taken away from so many areas. So that's probably the biggest problem that the, the butterfly itself faces is that loss of habitat. Uh, with the vine, um, also, the, the fact that they're in these small pockets, you know, the vine is growing, but it's not, we're not getting those corridors out. Obviously, with some of the good work that's being done out there, those corridors are expanding, and we can see that the butterfly is starting to, you know, spread and move, which is so critical um, and so important. So I think they're the two things, the fact that these isolated pockets and the fact that the vine itself is being taken away is really... Uh, Put the, put the butterfly in a very vulnerable situation. So this is the Parastolochia prevenosa. This is what we call, to make it easy, the birdwing vine. But it's a very special uh, vine. You can see the older growth is quite a, you know, it's almost a leathery type feel. But some of the fresh growth is just this beautiful, um, soft and, and sort of luscious leaf that the caterpillars love to eat. So that's what they'll be chewing on. Um, the unfortunate thing with the Parastolochia prevenosa is that there's also another one that's an introduced species called the Dutchman's Pipe. Uh, it looks, you know, fairly similar, but what it does do, we talked earlier about the chemical cues that the female butterfly uh, gets given by the leaf. The Dutchman's Pipe actually gives that chemical cue. So the female will reach underneath the, that leaf, lay her eggs. Unfortunately, as soon as the caterpillars come out, they'll start eating that leaf and it will kill them. Unfortunately, it's um, a very strong poison. So that Dutchman's pipe is a real problem and we've got to sort of always be on the lookout for that coming in. It's an introduced species that uh, really needs to be taken out full stop. But uh, that's the, the bird wing vine. One of the other situations that arises with the bird wing is this um, genetic inbreeding because we've got a small population this inbreeding isn't good for the population so we've done a couple of things with Flay's uh, fauna centre down on the Gold Coast where we've actually taken some of our males mated them with some other uh, bird wings from other areas up from Butterham and places like that and then re-released those um, pupae into the area here uh, to give that new vigour and uh, 
you know, sprightliness to the, to the population here. And we've noticed some really amazing changes and some population growth, uh, which is fantastic. But really important is to, you know, stop that small pockets and allow them to expand and interact with one another and really develop the population that way. So the Paris de Lockyer vine, as we said earlier, so critically important to everything that the bird wing stands for. Here we've planted over the last six years about 650 vines into this area, uh, adding into what was already here where we had some really beautiful old growth vine. Uh, the vines can be bought from anywhere. That's, you know, that a, a native nursery around your area, they can be bought. The vine loves just a northern aspect and can grow up and on anything. And by doing that, you're really creating that corridor and that link to um, span the, the two populations that might be, you know, somewhere near your area. So anyone can get out and do that. And I really, really strongly encourage anyone to do so. If you look just down here, you can see a couple, a male and a female at the moment. They're coming right up close, so I'm not sure whether you could see that, but there's such a joy. And one day, you know, you too might have them in your own backyard. That's the, the Richmond birdwing butterfly. Mm -hmm.